Hey guys, welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we will be working our way through one of the mini MCAT practice problems found at MCATSelfPrep.com, the home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Andrew George, a 99th percentile MCAT tutor, and I'll be walking you through today's practice problem as if you are one of my private tutoring students. Be sure to hit pause and try this problem for yourself before watching my explanation. Let's talk about one of the triggers for ADH production as seen in this diagram. In this case, the trigger for ADH production is an increase in blood osmolarity. A high blood osmolarity means that there's a lot of solutes per amount of solvent in your bloodstream. Another way of thinking about it is that your blood is very salty. This high osmolarity is going to be registered by the hypothalamus and it's going to result in two things. It's going to cause you to be thirsty and it's going to cause an increased production of ADH. The increased production of ADH is going to act on the collecting duct of the nephron increasing its permeability, causing more reabsorption of water. Thus, both thirst and ADH are increasing the amount of water in your bloodstream, which will lead to a decreased osmolarity. Think about it. If we're adding more water, there now is a greater solvent per solute ratio, making your blood less salty. I think it helps to think about what ADH stands for. It means antidiuretic hormone. I think about the prefix di, meaning double, and uretic, meaning uresis, which means to urinate, right? So double urination. And it's anti-double urination, so it's against urination. ADH is going to prevent urination because it's telling you, let's not get rid of the water by sending it through the bladder, let's keep it in the bloodstream. So that's the way I remember what antidiuretic hormone is doing. With that understanding in mind, let's take a second look at the question stem. Which of the following correctly describes the correct triggers of ADH? Remember, we just talked about increased blood osmolarity causing the release of ADH. What about blood volume? The way I would think about it is that ADH is causing an increase in blood volume. And so if we already have enough blood volume, why would we want to increase it even more? It would be a decreased blood volume that could result in ADH production. What about blood pressure? Well, think about the relationship between volume and pressure. If there's a high volume of blood, there's going to be a high pressure. So those two can both be eliminated together. Thus, answer choice A is the correct answer here. If you enjoyed this question of the day, be sure to give it a like. And for more MCAT questions of the day, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at MCATSelfPrep.com. And if you are really looking to maximize your MCAT score, be sure to visit my tutoring profile page and request a free 10-minute phone consultation. I'd love to chat with you about your situation and how you can maximize your MCAT score. I look forward to hearing from you soon. We'll see you next time.